Okay, welcome ARC youth to your Sunday message and we're picking up again in the book of Acts. We had a little break over the summer and hope that we had a good few weeks of holiday. And many of you this week are going back to school and you're starting to uh, get back into a new routine again. So I want to bring the message of Acts 17 to you. So we had a look at, uh, the, we've been looking over the book of Acts and we've reached chapter 17. And we are today taking a journey to the city, the Greek city of Athens. We are following Paul as he lands in this important city of Athens. Now, some years ago, a couple of years ago, I went with Heather and Lenin to visit the city of Athens. And it is an amazing city. It is very picturesque. And we went to do some work there with Syrian refugees. And um, while we were visiting the city, we had a look round at all of the amazing things. And we were able to use some of the Book of Acts to follow the footsteps of where Paul actually trod. So let's have a look at Acts 17 and what happens is, is Paul is preaching to the people in Athens and this is what happens. Paul then stood up in the meeting and said, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. That is what I am going to proclaim to you. Now what Paul did here was he took a walk just like me and Heather and Lenin walked around the city of Athens and he studied what was going on in that city and he spotted that there were lots of altars to different idols that the people of Athens had made. And usually they had an inscription which told them the name of the idol or God that they worshipped. And then Paul found this one altar that had an inscription which said an unknown God. And it was that which he picked hold of and decided to preach on. Now, as Paul was walking around the city, he saw many idols. He saw that it was a city filled with idols. And when you think about what idols are, they are things which people give their worship over to. So in these ancient days, they would have come, perhaps offered sacrifices to, given money to, spent a lot of time uh, bowing down to it or kissing it. And uh, these idols filled up the people's thoughts and focus. Now today, People still have idols. Let's think about some idols that we still have. Social media is a huge idol in many people's lives. And um, if we're not careful, it can completely take over our lives. For some people, it's relationships that are an idol and wanting to be in one or wanting to uh, just live to find a, a relationship. And I like this little inscription. It says the greatest couples worship Jesus, not each other. And then money. Many people worship the consumption of money. They spend lots of time at work dedicated to making money. And um, that in itself becomes then an idol. I want to think about three things that help us to understand what idols do. First of all, they take our attention. Whatever we give our most attention to can quickly become an idol in our life. We are easily, um, not easily distracted. We are fully given our attention over to this thing. You know, sometimes people spend hours just looking into a phone. Their full attention is on their phone. Idols take our time. Um, when we could be doing other things, we very easily hand over the hours of our day to our idols if we're not careful. And ultimately, you know, idols take our destiny. 
they take away from us, they rob us from the very reason that God has placed us on the earth, from the purposes he has for us. Now I wonder, are there idols in our lives that we need to stop and think? It's taking our attention, it's taking our time, it's taking our destiny. Paul had to point back to the one true living God. He said, don't worship these false idols. Worship the one who made everything and the one who gives life to all. And that must be our focus. That must be our object of worship is that God is the only one that we should give our worship to. I wonder if we stop and we think, what? is in our focus. What are we giving our focus to these days? Sometimes we're easily distracted, perhaps when we're reading our Bible and in two minutes we're back on our phones. What is it that you and I are giving our focus to? Because ultimately what you focus on is what you will worship. Paul reminded us this in this city of Athens that idols are the things which take people's time and focus. And he had to point them beyond these things to the real purpose and the real reason that we are alive for. So I want to challenge you this week. Keep your focus. Keep your focus on God. And no matter what's going on, don't be distracted easily uh, off of the things which you are meant to be focused on. Maybe you uh, are seeking to read the Bible or you're praying. Leave your phone outside of the room and just give your full focus to him. Let's pray together. Jesus, we just thank you that you are wanting to be the object of our focus. And we pray that we would focus our full attention on you. We pray that we would not give ourselves to idols that we would learn to know that you are the one who gives us everything and you are worthy of all of our worship. We pray this week as we go about our week and we go back to school that you would be with us, that you would speak through us and use us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. So I hope that you have a really good week this week and you are used powerfully. and that you are a great demonstration of the true and living God.